All right, if I'm welcome back for the episode of This Week in Charts via Conover Trades and Wall Street for Main Street. If you've not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on ConoverTrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it this week here. So markets ending the week kind of flattish. Now uh, we can see the weekly chart of the SPX here. Yeah, you know, basically up, uh, what was our close? Yeah, up a point. So 5303.27 last week. And there's the close this week right there today. Um, so you can see here markets. And again, I talked about this uh, last week's, in last week's video, I believe. I know I talked about it in my, on my channel. But um, yeah, I figured Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'd be sideways, right? Because you have NVIDIA earnings coming up uh, over the, uh, you know, on Wednesday afternoon, obviously. And that was really the focal point of the market. There wasn't really a lot of economic data um, also. So not a lot for the market to look forward to here. And the volume this week was absolutely anemic. Look at the spiders here on the weekly. Um, that is 217 million. That is really like, I believe there was, um, I'm not sure if this is true, but there. I think I read a statistic that the 21st, which is Wednesday, was the lowest volume day of all time on the spiders, um, excluding holidays. So excluding like Thanksgiving on like half days and you know the the you know Christmas Christmas Eve or whatever. I'm not sure if that's true, but it, it might have been it might have just been regular trading hour. But either way, very 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 light volume, um, and that was to be expected. I talked about the possibility of a pullback, um, and we kind of got one. I said if we if we can consolidate through time right meaning we just go sideways it's likely we're going to build a base to go higher i also said that if we pull back i don't see us going that far down and i think that it, it ultimately leads to another buy we did get a slice yesterday so nvidia obviously reporting and it was a very strange uh day so nvidia was up 10 percent yesterday it didn't really do much intraday you can see here you know, it had a little bit of a bid and then it kind of came back into where it, where it opened by the end of the day but um, and pretty much everything else was down <laughs> yesterday except NVIDIA, uh, Microsoft, you know, Apple, you know, Meta, Amazon, even the other semiconductor names like look at AMD, um, you know, it's down yesterday, AMAT, KLA, you know, all the big ones. TSM was fractionally higher here. Broadcom managed to be fractionally higher. Um, Intel got um, hit pretty good yesterday. They all came back today, but pretty much everything was down yesterday except NVIDIA. Um, and obviously they reported and again does anybody think they weren't going to have a good quarter um but it was more so to me about where their guidance is and where their margins at which is 78 percent, so it's still really high it's not 90 percent anymore so it is declining a little bit but um again really good margins for them i don't think that lasts for very long but again the stock has absolutely been a, a powerhouse and it's defied gravity it's really carried the market i don't think i've seen a stock in history i was talking about this yesterday um, I don't think I've ever seen a stock, and that includes Apple, that has A, been more bloated, but uh, B, that has really carried the market more so. I mean, I've seen Apple where there's times where earnings season wasn't good, but then Apple was good and, and it kind of saved the market. Or, you know, there was there was rocky periods, maybe like bear periods, but Apple got a bid and then everything else got a bid. I've seen that, but I haven't seen a, a market that was, that was just having as bad a breadth and just being so reliant on one stock. I mean, it's absolutely like this is more important than Microsoft and Apple now by far, even though it's still a little bit um, behind market cap wise, but only, you know, it's only 2.6 trillion. Um, but either way, NVIDIA doing some work here. Um, market still held up on Friday, though. We had a little bit of a slice yesterday and um, we bounced back today. So again, markets here are OK. I, I do think um, we likely get a rally into the summertime as long as uh, these supports are holding, um, you know, first big level 52.65. It was tested yesterday. Even if we pull back, you still have bull control and you have a plenty, of, plenty of room for higher lows on the weekly and daily. But um, again, markets holding up um, next week. We will have a little bit more inflation data. Um, we've got Fed heads out there all, all day, all night, pretty much. Um, we are going to get Wednesday. Not a big day, seven-year auction. I'm just looking at the data right here for next week. We have core, core PCE, though, so that's going to be big uh, next week. And um, obviously the full PCE um, for April revisions on Friday. So those will be big. So the market may look forward to those. Um, 
today we had Michigan Consumer, and that actually did drop a little bit. So inflation expectations coming in just a touch here, and that helped the market to rally up. But either way, again, long story short, long-winded story here, markets are consolidating. It looks like for another another leg up. So again, we'll leave it at that for now. The triple Q's holding up uh, again this week. That actually led, again, on the back of NVIDIA. So Q's had a good week here. You can see we closed at 451.76 last week, so about a five, six-point gain for the Q's versus the Spiders, which are up fractionally. Uh, but good week there for the triples. Um, IWM managed, you know, pretty good slice yesterday, but we closed back above the 20 today. And again, weekly weekly chart looks a lot better. Um, Diamond here uh, pulled back a little bit. The Dow being down isn't as big of a deal to me as long as the NASDAQ and the Russell are holding up. The Dow can see a little bit of an exodus and that, that could actually be money coming out of um, safety and, and going into risk. But it was down a little bit this week. We had a good slice um, yesterday and we didn't really recover today, Dow fractionally. Uh, lower so we did back off of the 40 40 000 handle by about uh you know a thousand points on the on the dji so you can see now just down to 39k um, but again no real problems trend is still up here but you have a micro double top right there um, smh here managed to close above the weekly red bar so that reversal bar from nvidia got closed above the socks which is a little bit more diverse you can see actually did as well so 52.17 we close at 52.20 so if you, you know, the, the SMH is a little skewed because it's so much of it is NVIDIA, but the SOX is a little bit more broad. I like to go off that. That got negated. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't pull back. I mean, it is still kind of double top heavy. We didn't close above uh, Thursday's reversal, but it did get a bit and we closed above that previous high. So S, uh, semis holding up. Um, Cloud software held up really well this week. Today took a little bit of a hit uh, off of Workday and into it. But outside of that, the IGV came off the lows nicely and still held that breakup bar low by the closing bell. So it's still okay. And I, I still like IGV on the weekly time frame. Um, Dow Transports here is still the weakest sector or one of the weakest sectors. This is your, this would be like one of the only concerns I would have um, for being bullish is you do have a divergence here. That it's definitely there. And what I mean by that is you have a down move here in, in the DJT and I can just throw a study on for you. Um, so starting right around here, the spiders go up and they kind of just hold sideways where the transports kind of go lower. So a little bit of a bearish divergence there. But at the same time, I've been mentioning this as well, that the, the transport has been flat for three years. And the markets, we've had a bear market in that three years and we had a bull market in that three years. So I don't think they're as important right now. As long as, again, like I said, as long as IWM and, and, and QQQ are leading, um, I'm going to defer to the trend, which is up. But um, yeah, <laughs> excuse me, transport's still on the weaker side and I don't like, I really just don't like the chart right now. All right, um, yields here, still holding up, um, four down, the two year is the strongest. And again, we keep hearing about all this, you know, these rate cuts and all this stuff, um, but the yield curves are further inverting here. I mean, it's like, so I don't know about, you know, cuts. Um, by the way, you know, something hilarious. I think I tweeted this out, I'll pull it up actually, I did. Um, it's not really, it doesn't matter, but it's just amusing to me. Um, so yeah, Goldman Sachs today shifts rate cut forecast to September. Um, yesterday, Solomon says that um, he doesn't have rate cuts priced in at all for this year. I, you know, typical Goldman, right? Uh, but in any case, I just thought that was amusing. But um I do want to talk about the commodity thing later. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Anyway, um, <laughs> the market's holding up and uh, rates holding up rather. Yield curve's kind of collapsing still. Two years is the strongest. You still got resistance around 497 to five. If we get through that, then um, there's problems for the market. So I'll, I'll definitely say that. However, the long end is backing off a little bit. The two, uh, five year fractionally lower today, 10 year fractionally lower. And the, the you did close above the breakdown bar though on the tens but we didn't on the 30s. We did kind of peak above this trend line here, short-term trend line, but we did not close above the red bar high at 4593 on the 30. So the long end still has technically a bearish inside bar in place, um, but it's still holding this trend line. Could it inch up in next week? Yes, it can. But right now, um, yield's still just kind of holding up here in a, in a trading range. Um, they did kind of put a little bit of pressure on the market this week, but 
as long as the volume remains like remember next week is a four day trading week and the lot of traders on vacation as long as the volume remains like i, I want to give the market the upside bias so anyway let's get over to xhb so 110 i told you guys about that level it held up i, I wasn't even expecting it to hold this long but it did and um you know xhb has backed off we're back down into this lower trend line here um we kind of closed right on it on the weekly but xhb just doing some consolidation it's had a big run i don't really see problems but it is doing backing and filling vnq here so uh real estate not the greatest though up six cents today but really good slice yesterday and no real rebound today like the rest of the market did i told you guys i did not like this gap and we you know it rolled over pretty good so and we didn't even get to that trend line there this can put in a higher low it's got room but i don't even really have a good level for it i mean maybe we could take a fib here and yeah you know, maybe you could go to the 618 that's where you broke out 81 maybe it's got it's got to put in a higher low there but i don't love the chart i would avoid it um xlf backing off this week like everything else got to bounce back on friday nothing has changed there um kre though that trend line i talked about last week is holding up well um i'd like to see it hold 48 that's you know i want to see it hold above that um at least on a weekly close i think that that's not much to ask for um kbe tried to break out last week no follow through but again lots of room for a higher low there as well if that breaks out that would be good for the market obviously so fin's a little bit mixed this week um broker dealers though holding up still at all-time highs or just off of them and holding all the moving averages it is extended on the monthly though all right so on to energy here and i guess i'll bring that up now i was fight rifling through here but you can see um inflows here into commodities um at all-time highs at least going back to 05 since they started um tracking this so big move there um it's mixed though oil i think is a little bit on the weaker side right now it did have a good bid today and it held on to this low you know this, these low pivots you can see the rsi inching up versus a down sloping market usually means it's not ready to break down so we can expect a little bit of a bid but it's had a lot of trouble with 80 dollars every time it gets to 80 um it, it backs off so i still think oil is going to be under pressure here um <clears throat> could it inch back up to 81 82 it's certainly possible but i do think 74 is a better level for it um i also don't like xle right now it had a it had a good attempted breakout last week and then it couldn't hold so I'm thinking you get, get a little bit of um, support at the 100 and 200, but I really like 87. I'm rooting for it to get there. I would love to, to, to pick it up there. So I think those, that's a good level. XOP 140 to 142. I like that level as well. Again, there may be some, some support with those moving averages. Um, and then the OIH is a little tougher, but between we're going to say 290 and 300, I think is the zone there. So energy a little bit softer. But um, I think these will lead to buys. Um, CCJ, again, a decent week. It was red, but um, it, it held up, though. Daily chart, no problems. Weekly chart, no problems. URNM, daily chart, no problems. Weekly chart, no problems. URNJ, same thing. So um, couldn't complete the breakout this week, but no problems on the charts. Nat gas, I'm going to go to the M contract. Actually, I'm, I'm going to use the N. That's the one I've been going off of lately. Um, I was looking for a short up here at 320. For a, just for a trade um it didn't get there i know some of my members got it um a little early and they made a really nice killing on that but good outside move there on the end contract if you use the continuous you can see the same thing so finally an outside move so this may be topping out here in the short term i think there could be one more leg up maybe into the three dollar handle um on the front and then I think it's probably going to back off for the summer. Again, seasonally, that's just what it does. It bottoms in quarter one, which is exactly what it did. It rallies up in May, June. And usually around the first, first to third week of June is when it tops out. Um, again, it doesn't have to. It could go higher. But that's just kind of the model I'm, I'm going off of. Um, if you look at a chart of nat gas seasonality, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty accurate to that. Um, I mean, I can, you know, I guess I, here you go. So you can see right there, right around Jan, Feb, March, and then up into, into, you know, maybe we're right here, right? Maybe this is happening a week or two early, and then we're going to have one more up. And then it usually consolidates for the next, you know, into the fall. And then we get that big punch into uh, November. So pretty much spot on, right? So far. 
So net gas holding up. Anyway, dollar index here, um, backing off of 105. I told you guys that would be resistance. It is. And as long as that is, that daily chart is resistance. Weekly chart is still bullish, though. You have a bullish green bar there, and you're inside of that. So dollar holding up. Um, before we get to gold, I'm going to talk about other commodities since I mentioned that inflows. Wheat still on the rise here. I've been in this for a long time, and it's finally paying off nicely. Resistance is up here around, you know, 750 to 8. So you can see this, this box right there. That's where resistance is. That's where I think it's going. I want to show you guys soybeans too. I like this pattern. Very strong. The weekly, I've been giving this level out for a long time for members. 618 uh, monthly. That's holding up and it's getting a bid. I also like corn. Gave this level out too. And um, pattern's good. I like soybeans a little bit better. But still good pattern. And I know if I don't mention potash, someone's going to mention it. Um, <laughs> so... Um, I like Mosaic the least. I still my buy level is still twenty four fifty, but if it can rally up and break up a buy, I know it's a long way to go, but thirty seven thirty um, could be a false breakdown. I will say Intrepid has firmed up a lot, so IPI is a lot better, <clears throat> and NTR I think is the best that, that at least at least chart wise, um, and this is these are holding up. So their potash starting to act a little bit better. Um, I, I like MOS the least, but, um, you know, they're holding up and they should benefit from those greens, but all right, gold here, um, backed off this week It went into a little double top here and, um, we're doing backing and filling the weekly here again. I like the separation in the moving averages, 20 above the 50, 50 above the 100, 100 above the 200. If this just consolidates a little bit more, you let that moving average come up to price. It's going to go to 3k. Um, and it's funny, I remember we were all, all talking about 3K prices, like it's going to take five years. Well, we made it from 2000 to 2450 in like two months. So 3000 by end of I don't think quarter three, four is not even really that outlandish. GDX still holding up. Geo, uh, G Go AU still holding up as well. I know Jason tells me uh, Equinox doing um, some pretty good numbers. And the earnings were good here, I think, um, uh, in, in a lot of these stocks. Uh, oh, Cisco, I think I mentioned last week, up their dividend. It's never a bad sign. All right, uh, silver backing off. A lot of people were, you know, lamenting it this week. But, I mean, guys, it's up from 22 to 32 in two months. So pullbacks in bull markets are, are not unhealthy. I talked about this actually earlier this week. I said, I don't want to see silver go parabolic here because it's not healthy. Um, and it did back off immediately like the next day. So, <clears throat> so that's not bad. 35 is ultimately the big resistance right in this area here. That's the big level. That's where it wants to go. Um, I think pullbacks, you know, 30 and 29 can probably be bought. And um, again, the miners are still holding up. SIL still hanging in there. Fine. Platinum uh, pulled back this week. Again, this also had a big run, so this needs to digest, but that looks a lot better. Palladium finally got above 1,000, but no follow through. So again, I still like it down here. And I mean, we want to talk about a catch up trade. So I'm just waiting on this. No, you know, everybody wants to talk about silver, silver this, silver that, gold this, gold that, but nobody cares about this and that's why I'm buying it because I want to buy it when nobody cares. Copper pulled back here, again, needs to reset sentiment. The one thing I'll say with copper is watch that monthly because we're now below that previous high, um, but good pull back. We'll watch the, how it closes out the, the month there, but um, I think 460 is a good level here in the short term. All right, lastly, let's get to Bitcoin, but we got to talk about ETH too because the ETF got approved and a big surge, obviously, and um, it's, it's going good and it's helping out the alts too. Um, Solana looking good again, Cardano a little bit weaker, Matic a little bit weaker, um, but they, they got a bid here. Mainly though, Bitcoin, again, that inverse head and shoulders, again, not the green trend line, the white one, shoulder, head, shoulder. Measured move should take you up to about 74.5. I'm just going to say 75 even number. And um, that would be a new all-time high. You also have a bullish inside bar here on the daily. So Bitcoin's still holding up. And I've been saying for a long time that this is just a big weekly chart consolidation pattern. And as long as that holds, it's going to go higher. So coin's looking good. Um, and again, markets here, 
volume, light volume. We're going to have a holiday shortened trading week next week. And if we can consolidate a little bit more, I think we'll likely have another trend leg up uh, for the markets going into June. So anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com. I'll talk to you guys all next week.